Brad, I've got a story for you. Okay. Which is not, that's pretty much how the podcast works that's anyway. Goes, so yeah. I don't know why Let's I started with that. Um, but uh, our good friend Scott and his wife Sam were Sam telling Sam. me Sam uh, a story the other day. And they're like, yeah, you know, we've been listening to the podcast a while, but Palmer is starting to become their daughter. Oh, yeah. Started to become a little bit of a fan. Okay. I was like, oh, interesting. Like, in what way? And Scott was like, yeah, you know, back in the day, you know, I think like when uh, let's get some vibes up in here was like a more like <laughs> famous thing on the podcast. I would say that to Palmer, like I'm going to go read her bedtime story and I'd say, let's get some vibes in here. Yeah. I turned the fire on and I'd say, Palmer, let's get some vibes up in vibes. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she never really like attached much to it until recently for some reason. So then Sam is telling me this part of the story. She's like, the other day um, I was in I was like wearing like a, just a, like a sports bra and like some shorts. And Scott was giving me a massage. Whoa. Palmer walks in. With Palmer awake, huh? Palmer, <laughs> Palmer walks in and goes, oh, let's get some vibes up in here. <laughs> and they were kind of like, oh, okay. That's, <laughs> we've never heard you say that. That's kind of like a weird time okay. to say it. Yeah, Palmer walked in, you know, it was like, you know, uh, 1130 at night or so. We're both in our bed uh, sleeping. And Palmer's like, let's get some vibes up in here. And then they said like a week later, uh, Sam had just gotten out of the shower oh my gosh okay palmer is like all of a sudden in their bathroom and she's like mom let's get some vibes up in here <laughs> and so for some way or another palmer in her head has got like vibes, vibes up in here with yeah. like breastplate just, of righteousness yeah, up in here. Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. so i don't know how or why there's um, also the same family that was excited to get a performance couch that's right and pretty <laughs> yeah pretty excited pretty proud of the performance aspect so, yeah Okay, Palmer's um, just a skeevy little perv. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh ooh, I, ooh, I think this tight beat means that it's going down with some random thoughts and white meat too. Midwest best friends eating fast food on repeat, so come along, let's have some fun and go ahead, get on your feet, because it's the Ghost Brothers Podcast. Every Monday morning, we're taking ground. Ghost Brothers We are back with another talk show episode. Wow. This talk show is new and fresh, and I love it. Yeah. Someone last night actually gave us this, Brad, which you guys could see on YouTube.com. Yep. And Ghost Runners. first time seeing Ghost Runners talk show in print. Doesn't look bad. And pretty good print, too. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I hang um, this up. We also had some merch, some homemade merch from people that said Ghost Runners talk show on it. Oh, you I didn't even see that. Yeah. I saw the GRTX the also girls from very uh, cool. uh, San Antonio. Yeah. New Braunfels. New Braunfels. The old, not way better than the old Braunfels. Old Braunfels was just, I don't know. They just, the, the bakeries. Well, I mean, all the Braunfels are, I mean, <laughs> just not, not what they're cracked up to be. You know, new, old, um, black, white, just good, mediocre Braunfels. If you guys have been living underneath uh, a Braunfels for a while, then maybe you don't know that yesterday for us, two days ago for you guys listening, was F12, our big yes. February 12th event. Um, we invited everyone to come into town. And Brad and I were going to put on a show for you guys. And we are still hungover yeah. from that. I said, I was like, I've never, I don't think I've ever been drunk. I've certainly never been hungover, but this has got to be as close as it's going to get. Yeah. Uh, just I, struggling. I didn't sleep much this week anyway, just because there was a lot to do. There's right. a lot of video editing going into it. So I wasn't sleeping too much. And then I <coughs> go to Tulsa, we fly to Austin, and then I slept from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., had a 5.30 a.m. flight, flew to Kansas City, played two hours of pickleball, all that leading up into yeah. F12. And then, yeah, today, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Did you did you sleep at all once you got in between pickleball and or in between uh, airport and pickleball? Uh, no, I wanted to, but I just couldn't. Was, yeah, like, like, ain't it risky. I was I like, don't I don't trust myself to take a nap on two hours of sleep. I didn't trust you to go to bed at 2 a.m. and get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a risk. Well, I was nervous, but luckily, so Alan and I decided to room together because he uh -huh. also had an early flight. Okay. So I was like, have some accountability here. But yeah. But then you said you had to wake Alan up. I did. Yeah. Which is I, just I, the worst. I hate it. I hate waking people up, even though they want me to. What do you, what, how do you, what's your uh, strategy on waking them up? Uh, let's, this particular let's say, time. Let's say platonic friend in the hotel room with you. I think there's different. It's, it, it, it depends on like, like if it's your brother, Platonic if it's your, if it's your mom, if it's your wife. If like, you want to get some vibes up in here. If you want to get some vibes up in here. No, but like, okay, so let's talk, let's talk specifically about you and Alan. What was your strategy? Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's a, the people pleaser in me, but maybe oh, yeah. this is relatable. People just, I just hate waking people up. Of course. I didn't want to make contact with Alan. I didn't know, you okay, know. Okay, so you're an audio, audio waker. I was. Okay. 
And I tried to be a little bit of a visual guy. Like I start turning on some lights. Okay. But do you like make sure it's like maybe the bathroom light? Yes. So it's yeah, kind yeah. of a far off yeah. light. We start you don't far want to blind away. Them. Yeah. Exactly. We 100%. start far away. And then I kind of moved the light more towards him. Bathroom okay. light did nothing. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get audio involved. Now I'm kind of opening the bathroom door way louder than I normally would. Right. Like Just kind slam of rustling it, around. Maybe, yeah. Slam it a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then that that's not working. Now we got to okay. move the light in closer. Now okay. I'm turning on my, my bedroom lamp. Oh, Brad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, we have an address. If you guys just heard some booing, uh, there's people in this <laughs> tiny little closet with us. So uh, we'll get to them later. But uh, they're here and they've been really booing me for the last 24 hours. So that's not that different from how it started. Uh, so, yeah, I'm turning on more lamps. It's not working. So then I just oh, then my Uber was here. So I just had to go. So then I. Oh, you guys didn't Uber together? No, he was still asleep. I had like gotten ready, loud, get ready, whatever. And I was oh, like, wow. well, I don't still sleep. But were you originally planning to go together? No, I okay. looked up. I didn't know what time his flight was, but I looked it up. I looked up like flights to Tulsa online. I was like, I bet he has a 6 a.m. flight, which is like 30 minutes later than me. So okay. I was like, okay, I'll give him okay. some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turned on my phone alarm on my phone and just kind of played it closer to him and started walking slowly closer <laughs> to Alan until he woke up. And then... So you were so committed to not touching him. I don't know why I didn't want to touch him. I mean, that's fair. I I think like if someone touches you the wrong way, I do not like... like And they wake you up, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Like I... Okay, whatever. Yeah, these guys are like, uh, but like, like I would like, have touched him had I needed to, but it was just like you know, step six or seven. Like uh, growing up, you always wanted mom to to wake you up. Dad is the worst at waking me up. Like, <laughs> where did your dad touch you? He would like kind of rattle my ankle. <laughs> He'd be like, Brad, time to wake up. <laughs> that sounds awful. It was awful. It was like my dad is like <laughs> rattle your. He's ankle. a very loving man, but he's not. He like, would take a ball peen hammer to my kneecap <laughs> just a few times. He's not like the most like physically like smooth like great hugger kind of guy. It's always just like Brad, come on. Whereas mom would kind of like come up, you know, touch you on the shoulder, like good morning, kiss you on the forehead or something, like nice, like okay. Give me five more. My mom also was very kind. Yeah, like, yeah. My mom was very much like, all right, hey. She seriously. My mom would be like my snooze button. I would be Yeah, like, yeah. Can you come back in five minutes? Uh-huh. If if Hattie said that to me, I was like, like, no, just get up when now. She's, when she's 16, I'm gonna be like, no, set your own alarm or get up. <laughs> like I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be that sympathetic, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, moms are better than dads at many things. It like soothingly waking you up. Yeah. Also, Catherine, very two thumbs down on the uh, considerate scale when she's up earlier before me. She's just not good at like like when I get up before her, which is most days I tiptoe. First of all, I put my clothes like I put outside pride into my tiptoeing ability. Do you? Yeah, I take a lot of pride in it. Like I'm very proud of how how softly I open and shut my drawers, you know, like and, and normally I try to like put all my clothes for the next day outside the room. But everyone's all forget something, try to go in and, you know, be very careful. I feel like if she, if she's trying, Catherine, if you're listening to this, you need to try five times harder. Okay. Like <laughs> it's just, it's just not even close to my standard. Okay. Like, it's just like, was your, it, let me ask you this. Was your mom a light sleeper? Was my mom a light sleeper? I think so. That's where I developed these skills. Okay. Not for mischievous vibes, but just like, oh, I see what you're saying. Just like, you know, she go to bed at 9 PM. I'm not trying to wake her up. I feel like moms in general are light sleepers because they're worried about their children. Oh, I think that's what it is. Yeah. And they've had something grow in their uterus before. Yes. Yeah. That's also true. <laughs> Most of the time. Um, anyway. Yeah. And there's like, whatever. I, I have, I have opinions about that. Like we're talking so much about the, the waking up process. Let me, let me talk to <laughs> more about that. So like we used to have a bathroom like connected to our room at the K life house and like the faucet, like when you turn on water, water's pretty high pitched. It'll wake you up. Okay. Good same, with, same with like a, uh, like rustling of like a, a bag or something really high, like I get, I get so, I get, I get angry. I'm not a very You want good, Catherine to be making like woofer noises. If she's going to be making noise, I want her to, real yeah, deep very bass. low, low noises. Yeah. And when she wakes you up, Brad, Brad, wake so up. No, so Brad, Brad, wake up. up. Hey, Brad, 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 not Brad, time to wake up. <laughs> like, Brad, I, I have opinions. That's, that's one of the things I have an opinion on. That's great. It's funny you mentioned this too, because the day before I shared a hotel room with Lucas and I was, okay. uh, someone was like, how was your sleep last night? I was like, oh, it was, you know, great. Like always. However, Lucas was somehow doing what sounded like banging pots and pans in a hotel room this really? morning. I don't know where he got pots and pans. <laughs> I don't know how it was the loudest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And to the point where when I finally got to the airport after him, he's like, hey, sorry about all that noise this morning. Oh. So I don't know what it was, but whatever it is, he knows that he was very loud and he needed to apologize. But I don't okay. know what it was. Huh. It was incredibly loud. He, yeah. Yeah. Where do you even get? 
things to make that much noise. I don't know. Talk to Catherine. Huh. She has <laughs> those things. <coughs> I have another strong opinion. We'll we'll get to the rest of that. No, no, no. Stuff. Whole episode. Um, let's, talk, let's talk noises in the morning. Um, I kind of, I, I don't know if you were here for this or if you had left by this time. Uh, same with you boys. I don't know if you guys were still here, but I was talking to Haley last night. Haley, shout out to Haley. Shout out to I was to still there. You had a lot of opinions. I did. <laughs> this one's the most, the strongest one because it's like a little bit of this weird intangible uh, not really sure why I feel this strongly. About I knew you were going to bring this up. The music one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we do Dadder Days, uh, me and the kids. We, we go out to breakfast. Uh, and a couple weeks ago, we went to Chick-fil-A. It was actually really fun. Oh, this is something I did when, in between when we've been here. Um, I was trying to remember what I did, you know, this past week. So um, one of the things is we went to Chick-fil-A and then we went to uh, Upward Basketball Games and watched some basketball. And that was kind of fun. Wait, for, you just watched? Yeah. Because they're they're too young, they're four years old and a year and a half, and so we just, you just watched and, random kids play basketball. Yeah, they they like have a league at our church, and I was like, <laughs> "Hey, it's Saturday." Like, Hattie's kind of interested in sports. Bo loves basketball, and I was like, "This is gonna kill some time. Let's go watch some basketball." It was great. You don't like it? I well, I don't have kids. I'm not gonna yeah. judge or anything. It yeah. just seems like a, it just caught me off guard that you went to watch the kid. I was like, "Oh, it's you're like, an ne- nephew." Yeah, no, 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 no. just uh, just little boys, just little random girls. people. Just thought, it would, yeah, you know, just figure I figure out their names and you know, cheer for them. The dad would be like, "Kind of have my favorites," yeah. you know, yeah. and I'd talk to you afterwards. And it's not that weird until like a parent comes up, like, "So which one's yours yeah, out there?" So who are you here for? Oh, we just go just kind of all of them, just kind of recruiting. Uh, you know. <laughs> Just looking for people that my daughter might, you know, want to play with next year or something. No, it was just like, it's winter time, so we can't go to a park, And but I'm trying to kill Catherine time. would take him. She uh, read yeah, the, right. the Finnish fair. book, the Yugoslavian book. What is it? Uh, Dutch, I think. Dutch and ease. Yeah, Dutch and ease. So anyway, uh, we were at Chick-fil-A beforehand, and I was sitting there, and I was listening to the music. Nice. Which, you know, usually the music at Chick-fil-A is like the instrumental, like clean electric guitar of like... You are my strong tower, you yeah. know, like, or whatever, like my, my savior loves my savior lead. Yeah. You know, like, and this one, I was like, Aaron Schust. Yes. Let's get him one, on the pod. Hey, Aaron, if you're listening, come on the talk show. He, he's a, he's a listener. He's a patron. Yes, that's right. Schusters. Um, <laughs> Juju Smith. And so, uh, <laughs> Juju, if you're listening, come play for the chiefs next year. Do you take want that. him? Do you want him for sure? I would take him over, uh, Joe <laughs> Byron Pringle. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Um, okay. So anyway, I was listening to the music at Chick-fil-A and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a Post Malone's like instrumental song. Yeah. And I, I kept converted. listening and it was, yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, it was Sunflower by Post Malone. And the next song wasn't even instrumental at all. It was like, Hey Soul Sister by Train. And I was like, whoa, this is. Okay. So I didn't hear this last night. Now yes. I'm starting to have more opinions on it. If okay. it's the real song, now we're the now real it's song. different. So, so instrumental, have at it. Yes. I, I'm, I'm fair. That's fair. Like, because instrumentals are kind of nice, flowy, nice songs. Yeah. Right? But all of a sudden, it's like normal songs that you would hear at like a bowling alley or something. You know, <laughs> I know <laughs> just, bowling alley vibes. Just places vibes. that are not as yeah, not as classy as Chick Fil A. Yeah. And your point last night was just like you come to Chick Fil A, you want a different experience. There's there's something set apart about Chick Fil A. Some yeah. people call it holy. I don't know if I would call it holy, but it's set apart. Uh, <laughs> and it's just different. It's and similar to my experience a couple of weeks ago where I went to this dingy Chick Fil A. This one was not dingy, but it was like, this music is not what I'm used to. And it threw me off and I've decided I really don't like it. So, <laughs> uh, true at Kathy jr. If, that, if that's his name, if you're listening, you're listening, uh, change it back, change it back, go back. Give me Aaron Schust. Yeah. Give me Cutlass. Please. That's all I want. <clears throat> Maybe some third day instrumental. Jeremy camp, Jeremy camp. Sunflower just reminded me that was, so I saw Post Malone in concert the, uh, the day that she was Super Bowl Parade, and that yeah. was uh, Sway Lee, who's featured in Sunflower. He was oh, yeah, the guy I who know. opened for him. Yeah. Do you remember that story? He had the worst uh, transitions of all time. Oh, remind me. I It was like, um, so you guys, oh, um, yeah. every transition one, he would bring up the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> Super Bowl champs, and we would all cheer, and right. then he would just like piggyback off that. Like, I mean, we got some football fans in the audience. When you're when you're going, uh, if you guys want to drive to Miami to go to the Super Bowl, you would have had to take a power drive. <laughs> That's right. This next song is called Power, power drive. drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's like not drive the ball on the football field, right. which would have kind of made sense. Right. The just, just straight up like, yeah, yeah. So this next one's called uh, like anybody out, out there have parents? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody have a mom? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Most this of us. This one's called My Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> drop, drop the track. All right. Spin it. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah good guy. Good guy. Hey, yo. <laughs> anyone out there like pizza? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's called Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Sway Lee, if you're listening, <clears throat> come on the pod. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I would want him on the pod. Okay. How Sorry. Do you, how do you, do you feel him? about no, no? How do you feel in general about getting more uh, interviews on the pod? Sometimes uh, I go back and forth on it. I haven't thought about it. Okay. I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, and I'm thinking, sure, doesn't hurt to try new stuff. Yeah, maybe like one out of every 15 episodes or something. Yeah, ten, you know, whatever. What types of people? I don't know. I was just I was in Austin this past politicians. Week. Yeah, probably strictly politicians, um, <laughs> or just um, you know. Just anything polarizing, probably, <laughs> yeah, is what I would like. Uh, kind of Rogan pod. style, someone very pro vax. We got the guy who invented MR, MN, MR, <clears throat> anything, yeah. mRNA, yeah. and then someone else, so very yeah. anti vax. Like, we did both, yeah. So, what's the harm? It's okay, yeah. Uh, that's what we're thinking. So, cool, I'd love to do that. No, I don't know. I was, yeah, I was just in Austin this past weekend, which I can talk about more later, but it's like you can talk about it more now, <laughs> okay. Um, I was in Austin this past weekend, nice. Um, so I was in Austin this past weekend. Um, <laughs> you guys are flustering me, man. I'll tell you what. Um, actually it wasn't this weekend. It was, it was during the week. Where were you specifically? Um, Oh, what's it? Uh, Austin. Okay. This past uh, week. Yeah. 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 So I was in Austin this past week and, <laughs> um, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, <laughs> No, but it was, it was at this conference called integrated is what it was called. Um, and it was, it's put together by this group called family teams and which was put together by, um, Jefferson Bethke. Oh, I was just going to oh. keep just the layer on the back, <laughs> which he was put together by his parents and they were put together oh, in yeah, California. Yeah. Yes. Uh, put together by God. Also true. Keep going. Um, so anyway, it was this really cool conference. It's, it's, it's centered around people that are business owners, um, but that are also centered centering their lives around Christ and their family um, and wanting to prioritize those things. So uh, it was really cool though, because it was like, I mean, it's like, it's a pretty small group. I think there was like 30 people there. Um, and I get there the first day and it was like, I felt very inadequate. Like, uh, you know, I, I meet these guys and they're like, yeah, I've everyone else's tables are a lot bigger than yours. Way bigger. Yeah. 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 Just metaphorically and literally just doing just fine. Big old houses. No, I, I mean, I meet people there and they're like, yeah, you know, I've written five books or yeah, uh, I have 3.5 million YouTube followers or yeah, I'm you know, subscribers, subscribers. Sorry. Come on, Brad. Um, you know, all those different things. And so it was just like, wow. Okay. And they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I have a furniture business and I have a podcast. We're on Instagram. And, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and they're like, well, what's your podcast about? It's so hard to sell like our podcast. It's people. not easy. It, cause it's like, cause first of all, they ask you what it's called and you say ghost runners. And then they say, what does that mean? And they're like, Oh, ghost so it's like a supernatural thing or like what? And I was sometimes. Like, no, not uh, yeah. Just uh, DC talk sometimes, but not. Yeah. We're going to bring on a ghost hunter. Um, but just, you know, I tried to explain that anyway. Um, but the, the conference itself was just so amazing, like so life giving. So it was, I, I was told about it and kind of sponsored by, um, our friend, uh, TJ. He was currently only Jake's friend. Um, but he listens to the podcast. He's, uh, somebody that Jake knew from a conference that he went to a couple years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, and TJ runs this business called walk in love with his wife, Brooke. Uh, they sell t-shirts and other, uh, merchandise. I was on their podcast um, when I went to Maui yes. in August. Yeah. He lives in Maui now, which is a really cool story. Um, and also has a podcast walk in love podcast, which is really fun. Um, but anyway, he had been listening to our podcast because of Jake. And was like, hey, I think Brad would resonate with this stuff. This has been really life giving to me. So I'd like to bless Brad with this. And I'm just so grateful to him because it was just like an incredible weekend of learning. Yeah. And all three facets of that, you know, faith, family and business of like just being so pumped and kind of thinking about things in different ways. So I'm going to actually do like a specific Patreon video podcast, whatever you want to call it, about everything I've like specifically learned through that time because it was just a lot. Um, and I don't know if everyone's interested in hearing all about the fathering things or the business things, but, um, one of the things I thought was really cool specifically, I guess I'll talk about really quick is it's just this idea that like most men, most people, um, who are working, uh, kind of hit the peak of their career in their mid forties to early fifties. And so it's like this, Oh wow. You know, Got all sorts of time. Well, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yes and no. So, so the idea is, Let's say I'm, I'm 30 years old right now. Let's say you are <laughs> 31, I guess. Thank you. Um, and you know, I have my first kid 
when I'm 45, they're going to be 14, 15 years old, which is like the most, not, not uh, every, every, you know, stage of the kid's life is important for you to be a good dad. But like, obviously teenage years are so important for kids. Um, and so, uh, you know, you know, usually when you're at your peak career wise, you are, just, your kids are teenagers. Yeah. Your kids are teenagers, but also when you're at your peak career wise, that means you have the most responsibility and you're working more. And so the idea is like when your kids need you the most, you have the least capacity for them kind of thing. Does that make sense? It does. And so the idea is like, Hey, figure out ways to not go into that same pattern of like, figure out ways to scale your business now, or, you know, you know, afford freedom later by figuring out the right things now kind of thing. So, um, just trying to be, I'm, I'm just trying to reflect on that in my own life of like, okay, what's that look like in the next 10 to 15 years of like, yeah, how can cool. I, how can I, how can I grind that out in a different way? Or how can I think about my decisions differently business wise and family wise and everything? So, um, that's cool. Trey yeah. and I had a similar conversation this week, actually really? talking about just like, I think, you know, just setting ourselves up for success. Like we really grind the next like five years yeah, and then we can really like probably take it easy. Yeah, exactly. It's while, like, so. it's like once you, so yeah, I, yeah, I could talk your ear off about this stuff and I probably will on, on a separate podcast, but yeah, they talked about three different types of business and there's the freedom business, the scaled business and, and the igneous. Yes. Oh. <laughs> the uh, sedimentary, no, the, uh, <laughs> the legacy business. So like, cool. I think right now, at least me, probably you as well, um, would say we're, we're in this like freedom business where we like, we're not on our own to have more time and like flexibility of our own. Like Golf. that was our yeah main thing, but eventually like as a scaled business means that you're having more people like employees and you can take a step back kind of thing. So, um, later on. So anyway, just really cool. I, I met people, there was, there was a guy there that, uh, was on twi was in some twilight movies. I had no, he's an, he's like, yeah, I'm an actor in LA and I'm like, good for you, man, whatever. And then I looked him up on, you said good for you, man, no, whatever. In my head, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> In my head, I'm like, okay, he's an actor. How many people are out there trying to be an actor in LA? So I, this guy who's at this conference next to millionaires, like this guy probably didn't, well, he doesn't have the chops though. <laughs> kinda, this guy probably sucks. No, I didn't, not that he sucked, but I was just like, I was like, I'm sure he's doing just fine making a living. But then I go on his Instagram, he's got 1.1 million followers. And I'm like, dang, like, okay, this guy's doing a lot better than I thought. Yeah. And then I meet some other guy who's, you know, like classic, like Gen Z, like TikTok looking guy. He's just killing it on YouTube. He's the one that's got 3.6 million subscribers. You know, like all these different things. I'm like, wow, this is wild. So, What's his TikTok content? Um, not he's not on TikTok. He's on uh oh. well, maybe he's on TikTok. He's he's a YouTube like vlogger with his wife. Oh, uh, nice. Did he feel targeted by our family vloggers video? Uh no, I actually told him I don't think he's watched it yet, but I told him about some of the jokes and he loved it. He thought really? it was so funny. Good. Yeah. So I think he specifically loved the one where we like we were like, hey, we got in a car crash, like. I was like, oh, do you need the insurance card? Like, insurance card? No, get the camera. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, he's like, that's great, man. So <laughs> anyway, the whole conference was so fun and so cool. And um, yeah, if you're if you're a family man out there or woman, check out Family Teams. They have a lot of podcast content and everything. And um, it's really cool. I kind of, I, I mean, it's kind of a radical way of looking at uh, the way families are formed these days. So um, check it out. But a lot of fun. So cool. I'm anyway. glad it was so fulfilling. Good yeah, time dude. For you. No, but TJ's awesome. Uh, I can already tell we're going to be like good friends. You always said we would connect well. Um, and we do. He's just, he's very similar to me in humor. Um, and just a good dude. Uh, there are a few, like he's, he's been, he's been in the group like three, four years already. And so he's way more comfortable. So he would make jokes and I'm like, dang it, maybe he's already the funny guy. And I can't, I can't make those same jokes. But <laughs> uh, no, anyway, we, we had great times together and now he's always like, dude, come to Maui and, and stay with me. And I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He also, I was kind of probably a little bit too overly zealous about Kansas, but man, did I get crapped on a lot about Kansas. Like so many people were from like Florida, you know, California, Maui. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, of course, of course, Kansas is not as cool as Maui, but guys give it a chance. Kansas is okay. And they're like, there's no way Kansas is okay. Like they're just like hating on Kansas so much. So you guys, you guys enjoying Kansas? You guys having yeah, fun? Really okay. Fun. You hear that TJ? <laughs> so anyway. No, it was, it was awesome. I could, I, I will, I, I, I will try to get out another Patreon podcast about this. Cause it was that, it was that fulfilling and that great. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, great. Yeah. Cool. Where have you been? You've been, well, we haven't recorded a podcast in like 12 days have... and we didn't see each other for 10 days leading up to F12. So it's been kind of a lot, like there's a lot to catch up on Yes. just in general. So, um, 
Yeah, did two different legs of comedy shows. So there's a lot to catch up there. Yeah, we haven't recorded since you got snowed out or iced out. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Which it I forgot to talk time. about that at F12 last night, but I was talking about it now. So yeah, I'm in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, like in Aust- Austin. Yeah, I was, there last, I was there last week <laughs> and uh, not a conference. And they're like, hey, because uh, the ice storm and everything, we're going to cancel the shows in uh, um, Tulsa and Austin. And um, those are going to be rescheduled for next weekend. And I was just like, oh, gosh, like <laughs> F12 is next weekend. Like this is the work. Like, what am I? Yeah. What am I going to do? Yeah. And, you know, the last time we tried to get everyone together, the basketball game, that rug got pulled out from under us the week of. And we had to tell everyone, hey just come next week instead now. And the, the Oregon boys drove down and they just hung out with us anyway. Right. And gas boys. And so it was like, there was like a 10 minute span where I didn't know when the shows were going to be rescheduled. And it was awful. Oh my gosh. It sucked. I, I truly don't even know what I would have done. had like a comedy show with Trey been scheduled on the night of F12. That's what I, I told you when I was, we were going back and forth, but I was like, I don't know what I would have told you as your friend, like as your friend slash business partner, like what would I have? I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to say would yeah. be. Just so happy I didn't have to make right? that decision or <laughs> yeah, the prisoner dilemma, you know, kind of thing. So, so yeah. But anyway, it have, was, you, have you, have you thought a little bit about like what you would have done? Like, I or, mean, I, it would have had to have been like a hard conversation with Trey and yeah. just like, Hey, you understand like 300 right. people, right. I mean, 280 people probably, you know, from out of town are coming yeah. in to like see yeah. me and Brad. <laughs> I really feel like I need to be there. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what we would have done if Lucas just would have got more time on stage or yeah. But also, Alan, it's like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Alan's been kind of practicing in his sleep every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> doesn't matter. Didn't have to um, go down that path. So um, instead, you just woke up at 5 a.m. to come. Instead, yeah. <laughs> you this uh, wonderful gift. My watch last night told me I was standing for 22 hours yesterday. That's unbelievable. So I hit my stand goal, linked my loops, <laughs> 22 hours of standing. You linked your loops for the week, right there. <laughs> Weeks worth of loops. <laughs> uh, but it was fun. There were some really fun, so many ghosties at all these shows. <laughs> So many Canacuck people at all these shows because we did yes. Fayetteville, we did Wichita, Tulsa, Austin, just like good hubs of just like really, really good people. Uh, we, were, we were in Austin and I got dinner. Oh, this is people. I was like, I'm so excited to see these people. David like and, David and Job and Morgan. Yeah, and uh-huh. um, we were kind of out to eat on a patio, like across the street from the venue. And like, so when you like go out to dinner, like before a show, people at the restaurant probably recognize you and say like, hey, I'm going to your show tonight. And I was like, oh, never, never. You know, like <laughs> I'll go weeks in Kansas City without getting recognized. Like yeah. it does not happen that often. And I bet I got recognized nine times that night. No, while we were on the patio, I was like, I promise, while like I promise, friends, yeah. Like, and I just told them this never happens. And then later that night, uh, we all like went out some afterwards. It's like midnight, one a.m. We're on like Sixth Street, you know, crazy busy Austin, Texas. You ever been? Yeah, I've been there uh, just last week. Cool or weekend, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> and a woman uh, like turns around, she's like, Trey Kennedy's show. You were one of the guys. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, fun to see you. I was like, do you enjoy it tonight? She's like. Tonight? No, I saw you in Tampa. I was oh, like, wow. oh, 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 that is not where I thought the rest of that sentence was going to go. I can't believe you remember me from the show you saw in Tampa. And she's like, I met you. I was like, oh, right outside of the bathroom. She's like, yes. So we connected. So I remembered her. But how are your bowels? Yeah. How are they doing? Yeah. You were in there for kind of a while. Your friends right. are worried about you. Yeah, IBS? You're, you got under control or yeah. what's going on? Here's pills. You know about lactate? Yeah. And uh, anyways, that was really fun. You tried I tried soy milk? <laughs> no. No, you ain't. There's no teats on almonds. That's right. I looked. Uh, so that was really fun. Um, Speaking of bowels, this is kind of fun. I uh, the show in Austin two nights ago. We had a sign language interpreter on stage yes. with us. Never had that before. Interesting. So fun. You think it was like a private hire? Like you think a deaf guy's like, I really want to see Trey, but I I got it. I can't hear him. Uh, yeah, I think we were wondering that too. Like when you pay for a ticket, do you check a box that's like, hey, I'm hard of hearing, mm-hmm. and then the venue's in charge of getting someone to sign for you. I've never, doesn't matter. I've never seen it. Or I guess it does matter, but it doesn't yeah. matter right now in this moment. They can't hear us, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we've never had uh, someone signing before. I thought it was great. Um, beforehand, the girl was backstage with us or like kind of just, I was about to run off stage. This girl's right next to me and I didn't understand what was happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, not trying to be rude, but like, who are you? <laughs> like, what's going on? Do you know Katie? Or uh-huh. she's like, oh, uh, no, I'm Hannah. I'm going to be signing for you. I was like, that's awesome. And I said that to her with my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, yeah, just like double rock and roll. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> like, what do you do? I kind of tried a few. I went okay, thumbs up, yeah. finger guns. Just like one of these uh, will translate. Yeah. And anyway, we walked up on stage together. It was really fun. And of course, I incorporated her into my act. I didn't know this beforehand, you know, but I was just like, I couldn't help it. Just so like. You say you walked on stage together? Yeah. Like she, like when you said, Jake, they said, 
That's funny. To we walked on the stage. I guess. I guess I just assumed she's already on, like over to the corner or something. Like that's funny. Like you're both just walking out. Lucas had his own interpreter, and so he got subbed out, and then she got subbed in. Interesting. For me. That they don't have the same one. They get tired. Because then they kept after that long. They kept subbing out for Trey. Really? Yeah, like every 15 minutes. We have one interpreter. We have deaf people at our church. Not trying to brag. And diversity. Uh, I mean, one interpreter for the you know 45 minute sermon. So wow. Maybe she, they're not SAG, you know, yeah, they don't get, right. they're not union workers. <laughs> that's right. Like the people in Austin. <laughs> but anyway, it was fun. So I just, uh, it was just fun to kind of interact with this woman yeah. trying to do her job <laughs> on stage with me. And that um, would be funny to like be talking about the interpreter and watching her. And she's having to sign it. Yeah. Say. It was kind of trippy yeah. for a second, but yeah, you know, I have that diarrhea bit in my show. And so I, yeah. well, I was like, all right, I'm, that's probably enough diarrhea content for the night. I, this girl's probably sick of having a sign diarrhea, you know, and they kind of <laughs> laugh. I was like, I don't even want to know what the sign is. I was like, wait, actually, no, I definitely do. Yeah. And so I waited for her to get done with the sentence she had just done signing. And I was like, <clears throat> diarrhea. <laughs> and then she went like this. Oh. And I was like, that's awesome. And that was like the hardest laugh I got all night. I was like, this is great. And so then I would just like throw it in there randomly just oh, to see her sign it again. perfect. So that made the, the Austin show pretty memorable. I love the it. idea of you like, yeah, using the the interpreter as like a prop. Basically. I can't believe Lucas and Trey never addressed that there's someone just, you know, 15 feet to their right yeah, signing for especially because it's not normal. Like if, if you did it every night, it's like, okay, eventually don't worry about the interpreter anymore. Yeah, it's like I have a little yeah. security blanket with me on stage. We're in this yeah. together, me and Hand Dog. Right. Yeah, so love it. Uh, that was pretty fun. And in the Fayetteville show, um, from what I remember, it was a pretty memorable one. Lucas goes out there and he's doing great. I'm like gearing up and this show, you know, I don't really get nervous anymore. I was kind of nervous for this show. My parents are there. Yeah. <clears throat> Garrett and his family are there. Yeah. Isaac's on a double date there. Oh, you know, I, was like, I wanted, it was just a show that I wanted to go. Well, I had a lot of friends and family there. Fayetteville's like got probably more people that we know that live there than any other place besides Kansas city. What'd you say? Yeah, so many people. Yeah. And just, yeah, my parents who brought their friends. And, you know, okay. I just wanted to go yeah. well. Yeah. And so I'm like kind of nervous. I'm like, wow, this is, uh, it's been a while. And right before I go on stage, there's this like commotion backstage with us. There was like a security officer. There's some other guy dressed in all black. And it's tour manager Tom and Trey all talking. And then before I got on stage, they're, they like grabbed me, like, don't go out there. Don't go out there. And I was like, who what in the world me? is going security? on? Uh, Tom is like, don't yeah. go out there. He's like, we're going to send Travis out. I was like, what's happening? He's Travis like, there's the DJ Travis. DJ Travis. He's like, there's been like a security issue. Don't go out there. I was like, oh my gosh, like this has never happened before. I don't know what's going on. Okay. And so the information we received was there was some like belligerent drunk man, front row, stage right, that we needed to address. And he was a problem. He was going to get kicked out. Okay. And we were like, I mean, we were watching the whole show, never saw anything, never heard anything. Lucas was like, I, I did great. It was awesome. They were so respectful. I didn't see anything. So we're so confused. We're like, well, can security kick him out? Like, no, they have to call the cops. Like, how crazy is this guy that security can't kick him out? And that should be their job, I think. And so he's this crazy, okay. but none of us noticed it. So wait, so it's already not adding up. So, so, so Lucas already went out there. Did his like 15 minute set. And so what's going, is it just dead, it's dead silent right now? And so then Travis runs out there and starts just like DJing while okay. they're like conveying all this to me. And so I'm like, well, when are the cops going to get here? And they say, I love the idea of him like, yeah, putting on some twist, uh, you know, like, you know, whatever, like flow rider, party rockers, you know, whatever, like all these different things. And this guy's just so belligerent right in the front row. And like the, yeah, the funny like aspect of like this cool music with like juxtaposed by this guy, just like screaming party rocking in his own head. Right. You know, differently. And so but you I, couldn't see him from where you were. No, you're and I tried to go stage left to like get uh -huh. a view of him. And like, we can't see who is this guy? He is playing it very cool. You're for, like, I think that's where my dad's tickets are. Yeah. <laughs> that's Trey's uncle. Yeah. That's right. not cool. Uh, and so I'm like, when are the cops going to get here? And like, well, we don't know. And you just, whenever they get here. I mean, it's Fayetteville cops. You know, yeah, you guys know Fayetteville. You know they are. Yeah. And so we're just waiting 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And great, uh, keep in mind, I'm about to stand up comedy. I am nervous to perform stand up comedy and I don't know when I'm going to perform. I like, I don't know. I was going to test out a new joke that, that yeah. night. And what are the, I, what's the audience thinking? Like, I know. And all of a sudden, like, mm -hmm. okay, it, this, the show kind of seemed like it started. And then now that we're just chilling to some music. Yeah. And the fact that there's this intermission, I think it, I mean, it sucked because like, okay, well, Trey's coming on next. And then, so intermission's <laughs> over. It's just like, oh, it's still not Trey. <laughs> so that probably didn't help my cause. So 15 plus minutes. So it was a little over 20 minutes until oh I gosh. finally went back out there. The cops never even came. Me and Trey and Tom were just so frustrated at the venue. We're like, we're just going to perform. Like these cops, it could be another hour. We don't know when they're getting what's here. The, what's this the worst that's going to happen to this guy? Like, 
Yeah, like he's gonna numbers. come up on stage. You're, you're pretty fast. You can run away from him. I'm quick. And then I told you a five, minute, five minute dash. That yeah, would be my right. Olympic event. That's right. And so yeah, it was just so frustrating not knowing when you're gonna perform, and uh, and people are leaving, going to the bathroom. The, some random like women from the venue just came backstage with us, grabbed the microphone, and made an announcement about masks. Guys, guys, please. I know we're trying to have fun tonight, but please wear your mask. It was just a clown show. It's like, it's just yeah, going, it was yeah. like, does, is anyone in charge? What's going on? Who are these people? Do they even, I guess they work here, but I don't know. <laughs> so it's pretty frustrating. I don't think Trey and I have ever gotten frustrated like that at a show before, but it just uh, seemed so just like mismanaged and mishandled. Ooh, that's uh, hard to come back from. Like, so when, yeah, when you're kind of mad and then you're supposed to come out and be like this goofy, funny guy. And then, so it's been 20 minutes. So then Trey and I talk, I'm about to go on stage. He's like, I feel like you got to address it. I was like, I think I need to, too. That's my yeah. style. Anyway, be transparent. Like we right. need to address what just happened. He's like, also probably cut your time a couple minutes short. I'll cut mine like 10 minutes short. I was like, great. So now I'm trying to think like what few minutes am I going to cut out? Mm -hmm. Also, I got to address this. Dude, it sucked. I was yeah. so flustered. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it was like my worst show I've ever done. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, the Fable show. Um, which, which it was still fine. So, I mean, such a bummer because you have all these friends that are I know. seeing it. Like, and none of them noticed anything. Garrett was like, oh my gosh, dude, you did awesome. I was like, oh, well, that's good. They have least. nothing to compare it to. Yeah. And so they don't know what. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going out there like, hey, so that was different, right? Um, apparently there was some sort of issue, but the cops are involved. And I just pretended like, like it was. Over, he's in this area he's right here. here. Is yeah. it you? Is it, yeah, whatever. If you feel like you shouldn't belong, why don't you go and take yourself out before <laughs> the cops get here? So fun part of the story, we learned later it was not a man. It was not a belligerent drunk man. It was two college aged women that didn't want to wear their mask. Oh, my gosh. That is why we waited so long. That is why they had to get the police involved. That's why they got the mic going. Like, because that's why the woman said the mic. security guards at this venue couldn't kick out these two girls that they wanted to because of a mask dispute. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I think it's like a thing like we're never going to go back to that venue. It was wow. so awful. OK, um, but Sheesh. the fun part is that totally redeemed myself yes, when okay. it came time for the song. I got a very small preview of this last night. Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, they were about to tell me something and Jake's like, no, 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 don't say it. I want to say it on the podcast. So it was just, and it's something, it was obviously much more of a moment if you were there, but sure. uh, we called this woman who to sing to, to do the imp <coughs> improvised duet at the end of the show. And I wouldn't say she was super gung ho about being a part of it, but her husband was volunteering. I was like, okay, this is fun. Okay. And I'm trying to get her up there and she kind of doesn't want to go. And she's very slowly like walking up the stairs. And so I, her name was uh, Antoinette. And so I was like, Marie? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask. But uh, yeah, like such an old person name. And I was like, uh -huh. she's moving pretty slow, too. So I kind of addressed how slow she was moving, whatever. We're talking to her, we're interviewing her. And I forgot what she. Oh, yeah. We're like, what does your husband do for a living? She's like, something with computers. I don't know. I was like, OK, that's kind of weird. That was going to be like the route I went. But then she was like, oh, I have some kids. We're like, great. And she's like, you want to know their ages? She's like, <laughs> All right. That's not normally what we would That's ask. A funny thing. So she offers it up. She says they're 19, 16, and one. Oh my gosh. And we're like, whoa, wow. Antoinette. Okay. All right. And so I was like, all right, there's my target. Like, that's my new. Um, oh my gosh. And so we're like, wow, that's hilarious. That's great. And so, anyway, I forget some of the other. Uh, what else did I say to her? You know, like, my you know, I'm flirting with her and I, you know, yeah. say something like, uh, I know you probably want to call the hogs, but you can call me tonight. So I'm really okay. building up the sure. flirting or whatever. And then the the final like punchline that everyone loved so much was just something like you walk walking on stage and you were moving like a turtle, but who had any idea that you were still fertile? Oh, and um, <laughs> anyway, the people just loved it. Like Trey <laughs> dropped to the ground. Alan like stopped playing the piano. He was laughing so hard. I've just like never seen them react that way. And that's awesome. It was really fun. Yeah, it was just a great. Absolutely went crazy. Yeah, yeah. I just like felt like it brought the house down. I was like, wow, well, now I feel better. So um, <laughs> totally redeemed yourself. That's what I, no one's going to remember the other thing. I bet. Yeah, yeah. The, it'll always be like the turtle fertile show. I mean, like, <laughs> I got so many DMs about like, I'm in the car still thinking about that fertile thing you said. So, oh, man, that's um, awesome. So I was love it. Anyway, I love it, dude. Turtle fertile. Who would have thought? Shows were great. Um, I don't know if there's anything else specifically to say. Are I think going, about the shows. Are you going out soon? No, oh, you uh, got like a weekend off. You're going to Fargo, right? This weekend? No, uh, we go to the Northeast this week. We have like five shows. Oh, okay. Um, I said. New York, Pennsylvania, yada yada, and then I think the weekend after that might be Fargo. Okay. So kind of fun, but yeah, been real busy. Uh, let's talk about actually before we get to F12, mm -hmm. let's do some blanks of the week. Blanks of the week. Blanks of the week. Why not? Okay. You know? And then we'll get an F12. Let's do it, baby. Yeah, anybody it. want to say blanks of the week? Blanks of the week. <laughs> <laughs> blanks of the week. Yeah. That was great. Um, okay, first we're going to start off with uh, 
<laughs> Justin, man. <laughs> if you couldn't, I don't. You probably aren't gonna be able to hear that very well. Justin just goes blanks <laughs> of the week. Anyway, all right. First one's what? Um, fan of the week. Okay, you want me to go first? I'll, so uh, sure. So this one's uh, from F12. Uh, fan of the week uh, goes out to Ukraine girl. I don't know her name. I from, I'm sorry. We we learned it, but we also learned about 300 other names last night. I think she likes um, to go by Ukraine girl. Ukraine so that's girl. perfect. Yeah. So yeah, beginning of the show, I was like, you know, we were, we were talking. Where's everyone from? Who's came came from the farthest? New Hampshire. I was like, whoa, New Hampshire. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know, San Diego. Right, there is Alabama, Portland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ukraine. And I, I was like, what Ukraine? Like, not like, not really like you, like Ukraine, Montana or like something. You were born in Ukraine. Yeah, but now yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. Like I had to move out of Ukraine because there's all this political unrest or whatever. And so, uh, yeah, I'm from Ukraine. Yeah. Like two weeks Came ago Ukraine. when tension started to rise a little bit, she was like, I'm going to get out of here. She said she booked her flight home. And then 10 minutes later, she booked a flight to Kansas City Unbelievable. from her home to come to F12. So, and she was there last night in a vibes, yeah. vibes, vibes, vibes. Uh, goes on as and I asked her because she's like, so I was like, are you like, did you like move everything out? She's like, no, I took two suitcases with me. Everything else. Some stuff back there. But she's like, one of the first things I packed was my vibe shirt. Yeah. I was like, awesome. So uh, shout out to Ukraine girl. Uh, yeah. Fan of the week. Fan of the week. Uh, I think mine has got to be Meow Meow. No Meow. Just incredible. Just yes. I feel like she's kind of just like, she's like almost in this position now. She's almost like the leader of the fans. Do you feel that way? A little I bit? Think, I think if there's like, like if she, when she's a mom, she's going to be the PTA president. You know what I mean? But like, one that everyone likes. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah she's very like, um, yeah, just it, it's like, it's reasonable. Like, it's like she has everything together and she brought cupcakes, you know, like it's like, like, like she has, she has everything like on the schedule and, you know, she also has the pizza like, and I'm like, not oh. even, I'm aware of like 5% of what she was doing this weekend probably, but I know she like helped coordinate all these people staying in an Airbnb. There's 16 ghosties staying in one Airbnb. Yes. And, uh, there was this really cool thing that was coordinated last night at Chick-fil-A, uh, that I know she had a big part, a big right. hand in, like they sang this like song to us, which yes. is crazy. Yes. Um, and then she got this for us, which might be too big to even show on YouTube.com. I don't even know if it's going to fit, but look at this, guys. If you're deaf or blind, uh, oh gosh, it's a big poster that kind of looks like podcast reviews that people actually just wrote to us uh, who are out of 12 and then everyone signed it and it's just awesome. Big words of AF guys, and there's a lot to look at on here. So yeah, um, so, meow meow. Incredible obviously, name. all our all our fans are fans of the week this week, but those two stuck out to us for sure. Um, just just with all the hard work that so many of you guys did for us. So yeah, it's gonna fall. Should we roll it back up? I don't know. Should we? Um, bonus fan of the week is the Indiana boys. Heck yeah, <laughs> <laughs> these boys. Yeah, everyone. How many? Yeah. How many times do people ask you if you were the I'm down boys? Okay, yeah. My sister asked me if you guys were the I'm down boys. Uh, so Northwest Indiana, correct? Uh, these boys came and they have the spirit on the I'm down boys. They are, they are hundred percent like that kind of crew, just like very fun, very lively. Um, and just, yeah. I mean, yeah, right away at Pickleball yesterday, I was like, oh, these guys are fun. They yeah. were giving me such a hard time. They're just like trash talking you just me. Tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. It's like, these are my kind of guys. So Yeah, and they're here with us in the in the studio today. And they drove all 10 hours, 10 and a half? Eight hours. Eight hours. And Four they're driving back tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> driving back tonight. So they yeah, they decided to stay stick around just to watch the how the sausage was made here. But yeah, um, hungover sausage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Soaked in beer for yeah. <laughs> extra flavor um no yeah you guys have been awesome so I'm, and man is just just well oh i will get we'll give more praise to justin later he gets his own blank yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um next is youtube uh podcast editor of the week oh mine's justin mine's justin as well okay let's have the same one let's okay on okay one. one two three justin, it's justin. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe it he's in disbelief <laughs> Uh, man it was able to make it down kind of last minute didn't know if he was even gonna get to come and boy did we need him because F12 wouldn't have happened without Justin. I'll yeah. Say Honestly, or, or at up, least it would not have happened at six o'clock. It would have happened acapella, perhaps. Maybe. And without videos and without any multimedia. 
Yeah. Um, cause leading up to it, I mean, all day I wasn't nervous. I wasn't stressed. I was like, I feel good. You know, we put in the work beforehand. Like it's just gonna be a great show. Yeah. And then I was like, Brad, why don't we just rehearse a few things? <laughs> Which is funny that at 5 PM, yeah, it's like, yeah, why yeah. don't we go over at least a couple to, things? Like, make sure we know like a few things we're doing here. Cause there's a couple things we were going to perform and it's like, it'd be good to know like the levels of the guitar and me and whatever. Uh -huh. And then I was like, huh, all the speakers went out. That's kind of weird. And then for the next 45 That's minutes weird. continues or speakers continued to not go in and they would cut out and then the projector would just like shut off and just everything was slowly crumbling and people are starting to come in and uh it was pretty stressful and i was like i don't even know if we can do this like yeah, and our entire show is run off of speakers and a projector and we so. were supposed to have a sound guy like a dedicated sound guy there and so i almost felt bad that justin like because justin's such a sound like multimedia av guy but i was like oh man we're not gonna be able to utilize justin i know he would love to be used he was utilized. <laughs> he, he got used. Let's just say that. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the guy that was supposed to be there got COVID. So then there was somebody else that kind of helped set it up with us. And then he left and he's like, yeah, it's pretty plug and play. You know, you just press a few buttons, you know, you're good. And then it just imploded on us. And yeah, so it got pretty stressful. We didn't really get to rehearse anything, but, right. um, end up working Who needs and it, no know? one would have known. No one, no one would have any idea that that's how it was. So yeah. yeah. Shout out Justin. He's in the studio as well today. Yes. So heck yeah um Thank that was fun uh next we were gonna do restaurant of the week restaurant i think we're probably week. gonna do the same thing as well because i already told the story about that patio i got recognized nine times so that was gonna be my restaurant oh, of the okay. week so on and so on is just chick-fil-a <laughs> chick-fil-a yeah 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 chick-fil-a yeah, yeah, chick -fil -A, chick -fil -A, chick -fil -A. uh yeah so chick-fil-a hosted the after party last night they were so great we stayed there till like 1 a.m you and i did yes as they were like when i got there first of all just the the, the scene was just nuts like the the it was it was so packed like it was so crowded it was awesome there were the line was literally out the door when I got there. Yeah. And uh you guys were out, were outside, I think, whenever I got yeah. there. And I was like, Can I scoot, scoot past you? And then I see Haley, the one who's kind of coordinated all this stuff with Chick-fil-A. She's like running all around, delivering all this stuff. And I'm like, Haley, is there anything we can do for you? Like, are you doing okay? Like, yeah. Because, you know, it's just it was just crazy. And she was like, if every single night were like this, my job would be so much more fun. Like, she's like, This is amazing. Really? I love this so much. Yeah. And I was like, okay, great. Like she's enjoying this. Uh, but they were ready for us. You know, I think actually it was one of you guys like said, like, I, cause I, I said, Hey, are you doing okay? Are you overwhelmed? And I think one of you guys were like, uh, we just got our meal in like a minute. And so <laughs> I think they're doing just fine. Like, like they were quick with it. So, uh, Chick-fil-A was so wonderful. They actually had personalized menus for us. It's awesome. Um, so the number one, you know, the original sandwich was the Jake, uh, Jake, Jake the great. great. Yep. And then the spicy sandwich was one I like was Brad Deuce. And then we had a few other things on there too. Uh, the nuggets was a uh, eight stack. Yeah. 429, 429 for an eight stack. For an eight stack. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of little inside jokes. Just so. drinks, you know, stuff like that. So great restaurant for this week. It was wonderful. They yeah. were truly awesome. Yeah. They were so, great. And we couldn't hear the uh, music that was, you know, probably we couldn't hear that garbage instrument. secular music. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Nessa made it Carlton so good. Over there or something. <laughs> Get that out of here. So, yeah. Um, and then last, <laughs> just cause I feel like we always do it. Um, babe of the week. We always do it. So we're going to do it. Yeah, for that reason only. Brad, who's um, your babe of the week? My babe of the week. I was, you know what? It's going to be my wife, Catherine. Um, really? Yeah. So, I mean, behind uh, behind every successful event is a strong woman. That's what uh, Eleanor Roosevelt once said. Yeah. And, and Delanor. I think he also agreed. Delanor? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, Catherine, she's not one to want to be, you know, up in front of people, you know, talking to people, she's much more, she's very friendly, but she's also like, this is wild that all these people know all this stuff about us. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I mean, yeah, it just wouldn't have been nearly as successful. I don't think if she weren't, you know, worrying so much about everything else so that I was able to worry about what I need to worry about with this event and with going to Austin this past week. I don't know if I told you about that. Really? Um, yeah. You know, just, just the support that she shows me and the the love and respect, you know. And she was wearing great. a coat last night. She people love the coat. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she was asking for it with the coat. <laughs> she was asking she for was, it. She's trying like, to get some vibes of it. She's like, if you got it, flaunt it. You know? <laughs> she, that's what she told me. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't say that. Um, but no, she's awesome. She she's my babe of the week. Babe of the week. Fun. Yeah. It's good to you? see her last night. I didn't get to talk to her too much, but <laughs> I didn't get to talk to her too much. Last night, night kind I was of like, felt hi. like how people describe their wedding day. Where it's like, I don't remember much about it. I forgot to eat. I got kind of dizzy at one point. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so tired and my feet hurt. I was like, <laughs> man, I can't wait to get married. If that's what this is, it, it yeah, is. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's so, that's a, 
pretty good comparison. Like, thank you. Yeah, I except, thought that when we yeah. were Chick Fil A, I was like, this is what people talk about their wedding yeah. day being like. Is this? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Like the part where everyone's saying to us in Chick Fil A, I was like, this is how a wedding is. <laughs> people sing to you while I'm eating <laughs> right. chicken strips. This is how it goes. Um, <laughs> my babe of the week is gonna be. Well, it, just, it feels like we haven't done this in forever. Yeah. I haven't had to do a babe in a long time. But yeah. uh, my Cheaty babe girls. of the week is gonna be someone who uh, actually met in real life. Which okay. I know you're always proud of me when that happens. Yeah. Um, someone from uh, the podcast, actually. Yeah. And my babe of the week is Top Golf Rachel. Yeah. Do you remember? We, uh-huh. I remember that story yeah, about her, yeah, Brad. Yeah. And then pickleball Rachel. Yeah, yeah. So she is my babe of the week and has been my babe of the last four months. Oh. Because we. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. You guys all stopped clapping like at the same exact time. Wow. All right. We're going to do 27 claps. (laughs) Keep track. Keep track. Um, anyway, yeah, we've been going steady for a while now and it's real fun going and steady. That's our term. Thanks, Wait, that's what, yeah. That's what we like. I, I do pref- you want to go steady? That's great. I prefer that term. I think it's more fun than like boyfriend or girlfriend. Back in the day, I thought it was go S T U D Y. Like we're going steady. And I was study. like, I was like, ah, so old school. Like, you know, you're in the you're library, going to study, you know, working on your, let's shorten together. it. Let's just say go S T D. Okay. Yeah. That'd just be quicker. <laughs> we're going S T D. Let's just get an S T D. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to have a DTR? I'd rather just go S T D. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. But but anyway, yeah, I've never, never opened up my life in that way on the podcast before, but it feels like time announced her to everyone at F12 last night. Yeah. There are certain comedy shows uh, that I've done where I've talked about her on stage. Like I would talk about her on stage to 2000 people at Salt Lake uh-huh. City, but I haven't told the podcast or, you know, some of my <laughs> friends probably don't even know right, yet. So right. it was kind of funny. So certain shows have been like, wait, is that like a real thing? And yeah. it's like, it is. Um, but yeah, ever since, uh, yeah, we met, you know, kind of met at Top Golf and then rendezvoused on accident at Pickleball. It's kind of been, yeah, just steady ever since. Absolutely. Real fun. And to awesome. add to everything going on yesterday, it was her first time meeting my parents. Yes. So they're in town. They were trying to meet. I'm trying to coordinate all that. Right. Her parents are in town. And you were hopeful to do all that Friday night. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice. Yeah. But I don't know if I told you this. I had to go to Austin. You had to Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Texas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. GRTX. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, really man. fun. She's and awesome. If, if, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You, you say more things. I uh, know. I want to hear you say how she's well, awesome. Oh, she's very awesome. I think... One of the things that I, I really appreciated her right off the bat was I think it was the first time she ever came over to our house. We were watching Chiefs game or something and there were girls and guys there. And I feel like a lot of times with a new girlfriend or boyfriend, even like they just stick together and they're just like very like kind of clingy, like, like yeah. you're my security blanket. I'm just going to married. You. They all know yeah. each other. But immediately like the guys were hanging out watching the game. And this is going to sound so like stereo. The women were in the kitchen. And the girls were in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but she, but she went but right yeah, in there yeah. and hung out with Catherine. She's like, help make stuff Abby. Yeah, for like, like an hour. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot Rachel's here. Yeah. Like, and like that impressed me a lot of like, okay, she's comfortable enough or confident enough in herself that like, she doesn't need to just like cling to Jake and like, you know, whatever. And so I'm, I'm, I think it's cool. And I've just seen like how she's already positively affecting you. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, like every just, day, like, <laughs> Yeah, there's so many things that I know that I've like really wanted to like kind of push into Jake a little bit on the podcast. Like, like the other night, uh, before you went to the Hy-Vee bathroom, uh, oh, yeah. you went to her house and had salmon and vegetables, and bro- and broccoli. Yeah, for dinner. Yeah. And I wanted to give you such a hard time or like <laughs> bring that up, but it was like, I can't say that, you know? Or I wanted to be like, well, why'd you have to go to Hy-Vee to go to the bathroom? You know, <laughs> guess you're not that comfortable yet in your relationship, but, um, uh, you know. Yeah, there's been so many things. Like when we talked about hide the ham. Yes. Like that was at her house, you well, know, when I like, went to Iowa, like, Jake, why'd you go to Iowa? Yeah. No reason. No reason. <laughs> just, just ra- randomly hanging out in Waterloo <clears throat> just, area. Huh? <laughs> it's November. Sure. Come on. No, you guys should go back to like the last three, four months and just listen. There's like really, really subtle. I always thought it was so obvious, but like anybody I ever talked to was like, oh, I would have had no idea. I mean, but the like, fact that I went to Cafe Gratitude, this vegan yes. restaurant, that was her birthday. Yeah. And I don't even think she, she didn't even ask me to go there. I just knew that she would like having to watch me. <laughs> Like choke down some vegan food. Like fear factor some vegan food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like no, this would make like, her happy. <laughs> like like there was that one episode where Jake told that story about how they went on a, to a comedy club in Florida. Um, oh, yeah. And that was the only story he told from all of Florida. And yeah. I'm like, like that to me was like, guys, so obvious. Jake tells so many stories. Like, why wouldn't he say anything else about his trip to Florida? You know, like, uh, so anyway, but I was just like, I'm going to wait, wait for his timing on all of this. And <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Rachel's awesome. And. I'm pumped for you guys. So thank you, dude. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. She welcome just texted me. So I was like, Oh, is this something I should say on the podcast? 
<laughs> it's not. Let's just say it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's just not. Um, but yeah, it's fun. Uh, uh, anyway. That's babe. That's the babe. Let's talk about F12. Okay, let's do it. So you want to just, let's just go chronologically. I think that's easiest, right? Okay, I was in Austin this past week. Okay, so I was born uh, November 13th, <laughs> 1990. Um, okay, so first things we did uh, was pickleball. Uh, well, first, even before that, Friday night, a lot of the ghosties got there, and our fans are just so fun because, yeah, they're already having this community with each other. I think like 15 of them went to Funky Town. Did you see that? That was so like, awesome. Yeah, just... So cool. So, I think I commented, this is unbelievable. Yeah, there were so many of them and they all look great. Yeah. And I also, uh, back it up one more. So I went to Austin this past week and then, uh, in, until I got like on the plane or maybe even like back to Kansas city, like emotionally, I was not, I was not like ready to be excited about F12 yet. Cause I think I had so much emotional investment in Austin stuff. And so until I got back from Austin, I like just wasn't pumped. And then I saw all these like photos of people like on the plane like coming to kansas city and it was like it was like it was a surprise to me that this was <laughs> happening like because it was like i was so compartmentalized in my head and it's then like i saw sudden, the tickets after all but i didn't see the plane tickets yes and, and now it's real and then like these pictures of like yeah coming from dc coming from San Diego. it's like holy cow this is amazing on my drive home last night i tried to think of how many different people that i personally talked to and and knew the state they were from and i counted 20 different states yeah that i know personally that people came from that's fun we should write those down uh and try to figure that out like or just do a little thread on facebook or something because it would be fun to see yeah um also sorry to interrupt real quick rachel just texted me a screenshot this is actually kind of fun okay. uh her grandma just texted her out of the blue and said hey miss top golf <laughs> <laughs> you know you would have never met jake if your dearly beloved grandmother had not brainwashed you for years about going golfing oh that's a very timely text that's funny <laughs> she just sent me that screenshot also i have a, i have a one percent theory that rachel's kind of a serial killer oh yeah i forgot to get into that last night at the f12 show okay because because her her story is i'm this. not totally convinced either yeah her story is this she was like walking a half marathon first of all just psychopath uh, <laughs> yeah. just for fun right was it even like an organized thing no it was just quarantine it was just like, like hey let's just let's just walk for a long time yeah it was just her and her friend like let's try and walk 13 miles that's weird that's, that's psychotic that's creepy, behavior yeah. yeah um and halfway i talked through, about that last night at the show too our definitions are fun are very different okay i was yeah. like yeah we should book a flight to hawaii she's like i'm gonna give up sugar <laughs> oh okay that's funny <laughs> well um, have fun and so they were walking a half marathon for fun and halfway through they realized this is kind of miserable. So let's find a podcast. And they just happen to be scrolling through this. Like, like it, right now I could be like, Hey guys, find me a podcast. It would take you a long time <laughs> to find anything. They like just happened to be scrolling through and found our podcast. Just happened to move to Kansas city a couple months later. Yeah, And then I'm going to move to Kansas city after I listen to this podcast. And then once the podcast guys get kind of into golf, I'm going to show up to top golf on Tuesdays mm -hmm. when I know they go. Yeah. And, and then, then they talk oh. about how they're obsessed with pickleball. I'm just going to go to that exact same pickleball place. Uh Oh, and oh, I'm not going to say hi to Jake either time. I'm going to make him w want me. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for his best friend. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who I know is taken. Yeah, yeah. And it's how like, sharks hunt. Yes. And like apex predator style. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like she knew exactly what she was doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all calculated. On, on saying that's like, she don't know what she's doing. She don't know. What she, yeah, she do. She knows exactly what she's she doing. She knows exactly what that's she's what doing. I, yeah. So, so just be careful. If she comes at you with a knife. Don't think it's to cook vegetables. Right? <laughs> it's okay. not for HelloFresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, well, good thing. She doesn't know I'll, I've taken two title boxing classes. Okay. So she's probably still going to kill me. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but um, anyway. No, yeah. I'll, I'll keep, yeah. I'll keep one eye open. Yeah. When well, I'm good awake. Good for Grandma. Shout out to Grandma. Yeah. Lor grandma Lori. Lori. Said that. Grandma Lori, if you're listening. Okay. See you in Florida over spring break. Lori. Um, okay. <laughs> so does. chronologically... First thing we do Saturday morning is we wake do, up at 4 a.m. Yeah, right. We go to pickleball and I call Jake and he's already there. Oh, I'm yeah. like two minutes away. And but I was just coordinating some different things because like I'm, we're not going to talk to each other once I get there. And so he's like, yeah, I'm actually already here. There's about 50 people here. Uh, and I was like, wait, did Whoa, you say you're like 15? That's a lot. You, I was like, did you say 15 or 50? And he's like, no, five zero. Like we're all waiting outside or waiting in the lobby to go play. And I was like, there's 50 people there. And I bet by the end of it, I didn't count, but there's got to be a hundred people there. 107. Really? I'm guessing. Oh, <laughs> but I was always, there's a those... picture. So I was like, yeah. I, did you go back and count? The picture all? looks massive. Yeah, um, dude. Did you count? How many? 80. Dang it. 80? 80 in the picture. 180. 180. Wow. 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 180.
Do we want to cut the lady bending over in the back? Don't stare at that lady bending over in the back. <laughs> <laughs> if you really zoom in on that woman bending over, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't look like a ghosty from behind. So I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, that's a, that's a good lesson right there. Is that not that part? <laughs> the the fact that that was eighty people. People, I don't know how to describe this. Like, like a number in your head, like when you hear like, oh, there's 80 people there. That sounds like a lot. But when you're actually there, it's like, there are so many people here. And I want to talk to all of them. Yeah. But I only have one mouth, Brad. That's right. You know that. One mouth, two ears. Yeah. So it was uh, tough. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to listen. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> and one other thing about pickleball, I was not anticipating playing that much pickleball. Yeah. Like, I think I told people, Rachel or, you know, my family is like, yeah, you know, I'll probably... You know, if people want to challenge Scott and I, like I'll go up and play it and then I'll just like sit back down and yeah. I just want to talk to people. Like yeah. pickleball is just a reason for us to gather. And then, I mean, from the second I got there, I like, got off the phone with you. It was like, and I just played pickleball for two hours straight. The gauntlet was set. Like, the gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. $500 was on the line. Did anybody like seem like they were really seriously like going to like try to take you down? I know they didn't. Just well, the first alert. two guys that we played of the day were wearing like matching blue like outfits, like they had headbands and like accessories. And I was like, they came together to oh, really? uh yeah, to like beat us maybe. Uh -huh. And then we beat them 11-0. So I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> and done. then like three games later, which I guess we had not given up a point yet. So yeah. I was like, wow, they, they keep coming and no one has scored a point. They keep wow. coming. Like the fourth game of the day, you know, we're like, hey, what's your name? Okay, Claire, nice to meet you. What's your name? And okay, Josh, nice to meet you. He's like, and what's your name? Okay, Scott, and then what's your name? I was like, Jake, and he was just dead serious. So I was like, oh, oh okay. this guy might be a ringer. He has okay. no, he doesn't even know what's happening right now. Or he's even... just, he's just walking by like the pickleball courts. He's like, I'll go. Remember the time someone said football, so yeah, I came running. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, if he doesn't know who we are, then like maybe I am in for some trouble. But anyway, I think Not... the most sitting one scored on us all day was two. What about Big Daddy? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> do we need to go over some of those points? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, we were great. going for entertainment value, yeah. and I think we succeeded. We did. Brad was so funny. Um, and yeah, there are multiple points in the game where I would just lob it to Brad, just let him smack it on me. <laughs> I was just hoping to get maybe smacked in the forehead or something. Oh but my gosh. Dude. Before the game, too. So Brad and I didn't get to play each other all day. Brad was kind of, you chatted for like the first hour, just talking to people. Yeah, and then, I only played two games. Yeah, you, then you kind of started to play a little pickleball. And so Scott and I were like, we got to get Brad to this court. And then it's already past noon, but we're like, we got to play against Brad. And um, you and uh, Jeff, who I saw at McLean's earlier that morning. It's kind nice. of fun. Nice guy. Yeah. Um, Jeff and Regina from Milwaukee. Yes. And you guys partnered up and everyone was so excited to see Brad come out on the court finally. Because it was kind of like a champion's court, if you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, I did a few laps. Yeah, so Brad up. starts running around, getting the people fired up. Then he starts running suicides <laughs> and he almost fell over. <laughs> well, no, I like almost blew out my shoe. I was, <laughs> my shoes weren't tied. And so... <laughs> And so like, like my foot came out of my shoe. I was like, did I just break my shoes? That oh, was, that was yeah. awesome. So, I mean, the definition of getting the people going and then, yeah, we played and that I game and my, no, it was your dad, but practically my proud dad in the corner, like <laughs> filming everything we were doing, just dying, laughing the oh, whole time. My dad, he's going to need a second phone just to film you. <laughs> he loves filming you, Yeah, man. Um, which better than filming that woman bending over, you know, <laughs> so skeevy little perv over there. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> No, but pickleball was so cool. It was it was, it a was great, so fun. It was a great precursor of like, holy cow, this is this, this is gonna is be happening. a good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, and I think we were joking, but we were also serious. Like we could end the day there. Like yes. that was so fun. Like so yeah. many memories were made just playing pickleball and getting to meet everyone. I'm I'm convinced that the World Pickleball Championships don't get as much noise as we were like our game. Like like noise. the crowd noise that was <laughs> happening when like if we scored a point on you was just electric. Like, it was so funny too. I mean like when Scott and I would like screw up or something, even if we didn't lose a point, just like we were serving and hit it in the uh -huh. net, the crowd were just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mainly these Indiana guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were just like, it was, it got to be a little demoralizing. Yeah, you know, I was like, I don't want to screw up. They're, I'm going to get booed. I know. Yeah. It's like, it's like Jake and I both do the pot. You're fans of both of us. Yeah. You're only cheering for one of us here. It was so awesome. Oh, it was great. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Your dad said you could get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Head. Honestly, I'm just thinking of this now, but we should just do like a pickleball tournament this summer because it's such an easy way to like gather. Yeah. Like we just rented out Meadowbrook. I think that's fun. We talked about had, that a long time ago when we first got into it. With like, Chick-fil-A. With, Chick with Harrison. Yeah. 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 That go. Um, <laughs> no, we should. That'd be, that'd be really fun. Tentative go start his pickleball tournament this summer. Great. Let's do it. Mark your calendars. This summer. <laughs> just put, just put over the whole summer. Might be a pickleball tournament. June, May, June through Ju July. August, August, whatever. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> um, so pickleball was fantastic. Got way sweatier than I planned on. And um, it was just the start of me linking my loops that day. Yes. And then, yeah, I went out to dinner, or went out to lunch with my family, Rachel's family. Um, gosh, it's so nice to just be freed up. Just not, I'm not holding anything back. Yeah, anymore. Yeah. It just feels nice. Just with let it out. My family and this other girl's family. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, there was a lot of my friend for the past four months. <laughs> yeah. My friend was texting me the other day. This friend of mine is, has Man, all these Manny coats. Petty. Remember that? Uh, oh, joke? yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Manny. Manny. Yeah. Mr. Manny was Rachel's, uh, whatever. Yeah. Rachel's the one who got walked in on in the, or she walked in on the guy in the bathroom and he just, yeah, waved just at shook, her yeah. she's the one who has all the coats which last night i said that the show was like and rachel was the one from the podcast who has all the coats like randomly being sent to her door and then a bunch of people go oh i was like that's <laughs> such a weird reaction to i don't know just I don't because know. because you never figure out if that was really the reason why like it wasn't like this sweet like reason that people were sending her coats <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah <laughs> kind of fun but um anyway. anyway yeah you were doing that i was running all around i still had to go grab a guitar from somebody and grab uh, yeah cords from somebody, and I was running all around doing that. And then I came home, and I was supposed to fix the oven yesterday. I was like, Catherine, it's not happening. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, went home for just a second, and then we were supposed to get back up there by three to work on sound stuff with this guy because he was going to leave afterwards. So, which is kind of a blessing. It was a huge blessing in disguise because originally we were supposed to only get in there at five o'clock. That would have been so dumb. That would have been wild. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we were trying to conserve as much money as we could. So it's like, Hey, let's just get in there at five doors open at five 30. We could set it up really quick. Oh man, that would have been wild. So got there. And yeah, like we said, the, the sound was going great. Everything was, the vibes were going very up and then it just crashed. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that was, I remember at one point I was, I was, I was kind of out of it. It was more you and Justin that were working all that stuff. And I was trying to do all the other, like t- coordinating pizza with scott which that'll we'll get there but um you know and talking to gunner about all that and whatever and but i remember i, I at one point you just go dude this sucks <laughs> and, and that's like that's like the most negative i've ever heard jake in my life like it's like dude no it's gonna be okay we're gonna figure it out i know i appreciate uh, you saying that yeah yeah it was yeah. just like wow the amount of effort that has gone into this even just this week alone right that i put into this yeah and so much of it is video driven so much yes. of it is audio driven and that's now none of it works the, the show was like seven eight videos like yeah. we had so many videos and so the fact that like we weren't even going to show those at all yeah it was just going to be a huge bummer it was a bummer so, for the people who came it wasn't yeah. like man i really wanted to rap tonight it was like right. i just want people to feel like they got their money's worth and totally. had a good time so 100 percent. but it all ended up working the show was great yeah um the the intro man like that alone was like worth it for me um i have never been applauded or just cheered for like that in my life really not after a show not before a show nothing really? i mean yeah that was like what you get at the end of something. And that was the beginning. It was yeah. like, give it up for Jake and Brad. And yeah, yeah I could relive that every day I know, of my life. That was crazy. Yeah. So we did like a countdown. Justin, shout out Justin for helping me. I had this idea, idea like we should do the Jock Jam song for the countdown. I texted him at like 11 p.m. that night. Like just like, hey, do you think you could put this thing together real quick? And of course he nailed it. Yeah. Um. So the countdown gets done and then we do this intro video, which should we post some of this stuff to our Patreon? I think that'd be Yeah, some cool. public, some private. Um, so and the intro just video for the pervert over there. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, man, the uh, <laughs> the uh, intro video was just a cool like kind of culmination of like from start like beginning to end. Like it, it started out like with video of us before we were even doing Ghost Runner stuff, and then it ended with us like talking about like this idea for F twelve and. Uh, and at the very end, like the theme song, the ghost first theme song comes on and we walk up there. Scott was screaming. Yeah, Scott introduced us. Of course he loves that. And, and people just went nuts. It was awesome. It was so cool. That was, a, that was seriously maybe my favorite part of the night. Yeah. Maybe. No, my, was running out there. Mine, I No, mine was the pizza thing. Talk so, about the pizza thing. Okay. So yeah. Um, once we got it, yeah, we did a few other things, but then uh, we had this idea. Another, it was another idea that I had like. The night before, like, or the day you before. Called you called me the day before talking. and you're like, hey, we used to do this at Canacuck. Yeah, but we never, we didn't do this at Canacuck. We, <laughs> at Canacuck back in the day, we would order a pizza and we'd have one of our friends dress up like a pizza guy and be like a goofy character. And come oh, up. it was always uh, yeah, a yeah, bit. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't a real pizza guy. Yeah, so I, I was explaining <laughs> this to you and I think you misunderstood. Yep. And I was like, wait, that's a really good idea. We should have like the real pizza guy come up. Oh, and so you it was wanted kind of to like, do it as a skit. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I have a real pizza I guy. Think I, I think so. <laughs> I think it was kind of like an accidental idea by you that I was like, yes, we should absolutely do it. That's so funny. what we did was Scott coordinate. So backstory is we were supposed to originally do this uh, event at McLean's. 
Um, you know, McLean's is a coffee shop, has food and everything. So I was like, 6 p.m. That'll be great. Because McLean's it was like a five hundred dollar deposit for the event, but whoever bought food like went towards that five hundred dollar deposit. So it was like we'd probably make our money back from that. And so I was like, sweet, free event. Um <laughs> and then I was like, let's just charge ten dollars for people just to, you know, have a money, you know, into it or whatever. Very thankful we charged the money because if not, we would have lost a lot of money. Anyway, so it was from six to eight. So therefore, uh, like people were having to eat lunch or dinner or whatever, like super early. Uh, so I was like, maybe we should just feed them some pizza. So, um, I had Scott order pizza to be delivered at six 30. Um, and I was like, Scott, just tell the pizza guy to come up to, on the stage and, you know, best case scenario, this guy, like it's a pretty fun, like guy and we'll roll with it and we can talk to him and have some inside jokes with this guy, get to know him a little bit better, like kind of cheer him on. And then I had the thought of like, how cool would it be? if like we just gave him like some like amazing tip like just kind of ask people if they wanted to tip him they could and yeah um and so that was as much planning as we did because mm -hmm. when he got up there i feel like we both looked at each other we're like what <laughs> like do we do now <laughs> you used to go do you have any hobbies <laughs> <laughs> which i'm glad uh, i asked him yeah because we learned it's a wholesome guy he's like i go to the dog park every, every day. day yeah it's like every do you have a dog <laughs> oh, okay good 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 yeah, yeah. so yeah. this guy caleb yeah caleb right mm -hmm. um so he comes up on stage and it was like in the middle of like, it was perfect. It was in the middle of a game that we were doing. So it was like kind of what we were supposed to, what was. Yeah. Everyone was, was on stage for family feud. Yeah. And then pizza guy was also up there. Yeah. Too. And, uh, you know, we interview him and then I was like, you know, I think it'd be really cool if we, I think I used the word bless or, you know, whatever. I, I think it'd be cool if we, if we gave him an awesome tip, Oh bless, you know, <laughs> bless this boy. <laughs> and, uh, and so all of a sudden, like I was thinking like Brad even said, he's like, so why don't you guys pass your money to the end of the aisle? Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, it. we should charge the stage. Yes. All right. All of a sudden, I think, honestly, I think it was my niece and nephew, nephew. Yeah. Like these little, like, you know, six year old kids that like walked up to the stage, just gave him money. And then all of a sudden, I mean, 20, 30, I don't even know, 80 people. I don't know. <laughs> uh, came up and gave this guy money. And it was just like the most, like we talk about at camp, we call moments of wonder. And, like this, like moment where it's just like, you're watching and you're just like, what, how this is amazing. Like watching these people give this guy money and watching his face of like, what is happening? Thank you. Like, yeah. I had no idea. Like, I just love the idea of him going back to Domino's and be like, dude, it took you like 30 minutes to deliver that pizza. Like what happened? He's like, hope it was worth it. You're not going to believe this, you know, yeah. just have like well, up $300. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, dude. So uh, anyway, it was so cool. People, we chanted his name, you know, <laughs> yeah. at the end. I mean, just so fun. So. It was, all, I could tell, he seemed very overwhelmed by the end of it. He yeah. was like, the really? money was like shaking his hand. He almost walked off without like the, the yes. pizza container and everything. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that Sam Cell got his uh, phone number. Oh, really? So we can like follow up with him oh, cool. one way or another. Oh, great. Want, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was, that was super fun. Like, and it was, it was one of those things. It's like, it perfectly encapsulates like our fans and like the fact that they're generous and like you know, wanted to help other people. It's another so. example of us feeling like we're not really doing anything. We just kind of did the thing that let you <laughs> yeah. guys do the better thing. Right. Right. So yeah. anyway, it was, it was really cool. So, uh, along with that, let's see other highlights. Family feud was fun. We did a little friends. We did our friends versus our fans for family yeah. feud. Um, and our friends, fun. our friends are funny, funny people. So they did good. Harris and uh, we're like, so let's introduce our friends. You guys just like say your name and something else. So uh, I don't even know what the prompt yeah, was. Yeah, and yeah. then Harrison just goes, Harrison, facetious f-a-c <laughs> yeah. and that was great and uh scott or isaac was like so my name is isaac the 600 dollars espresso machine was the best investment i've ever made <laughs> like everyone had like a joke prepared yeah, yeah. did you tell them to come no, swing? No. okay they were all just great they're just awesome yeah harrison did fantastic too with that improv game we did like Dude, we yeah. never went over any of that with yeah him. he did do a good job with that so and he nailed it it was the it was the whose line is it anyway news flash kind of game where the um it's the, like you're a reporter video in the behind field. you yeah. like yeah, is something going on where you're you're reporting the field, but they don't know what's behind you. So we're asking him questions, kind of open ended questions, and he's answering them. And he did, yeah, he's he's so good. Harrison's so good. Yeah, he was cracking yeah. me up. We're like, have you ever seen anything like this? He's like, a couple times in high school, <laughs> <laughs> or something. Yeah. And then one time I think he said something like, "Yeah, this happened to me," and it was like right when like a guy like nailed his crotch on like, <laughs> like a half pipe or something. So um, and towards the end, I was like, I think he's kind of got it figured out, and I was like uh harrison do you know what's behind you and he goes yeah gunner and in that moment it was a wakeboarder yes, behind him right. i was like that was so amazing yeah. great job you nailed yeah. it so um i mean the, the the crowd the whole night was like electric i think 
one night we went back to change clothes in, in that dressing room. We're like, dude, this is crazy. They they just like laugh at anything. Yes, <laughs> it was like it was like anything we said. It was like instant laughter, just like the warmest crowd ever. Like you know, we will be like, give it up for my parents. Like so, we had Q and A with our parents at one point. Like our parents came up, and everyone went crazy for our parents. Like you know, just it was by far the most everything. respectful crowd I've ever performed for. I mean, when we were talking, it was dead silent. Yeah. There wasn't a chirp. There wasn't a cell phone. It was yeah. crazy. And yeah. Uh, we had a special guest portion of the night, so Mr. James was able to be there. <laughs> and he uh, was awesome. He like, did so good. And yeah. that was another thing. We didn't plan. We we did not do a very good job. <laughs> we didn't tell anyone anything. Yeah. We're just like, we'll bring you up there and we'll figure we'll it talk out. About, let's talk about things. Like, you know, we'll do it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> it's a special. I felt when we called J James up there. I was like, shoot, I didn't really yeah. plan anything. We hadn't else. seen James in like a year. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you want to come help us out? So. Um, yeah, and he was really great. So yeah, we were able, we were able to get Mr. James. We were able to get Top Golf Rachel the yeah. last second. Yeah, um, and we flew in uh, our northeastern. Um, oh yeah, we were able to get this used car salesman. Yeah, um, his nickname is Santo Mac. Yeah, um, that's what he goes by. I think it's it's something Santorini, Santorini, Santorino, uh, yeah, some Klusky. Uh, but man, yeah. he was there. He was in a burgundy suit, which is fun. <laughs> he was he was a bad comedian though. Like, yeah. <laughs> He tried to make some jokes. They didn't really make sense. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And yeah, then uh, let's see. The night ended. Oh, we haven't got to debrief this. Uh -huh. the, so, yeah, Brad starts singing. Well, oh, I don't know what to say about it because you're going to do it at the end. She, should we just wait? Well, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're going to say. Basically, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And then I start listening to the words. I'm like, what? hold on a okay. second. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fair. So. <laughs> Okay, so the the song, and I'll, well, this will be the end jingle today, but it's Seasons of Love, which is the rent, you know, 525,000, you know, 600 minutes. Um, and Kelsey Settle, uh, who, we, who I met in Phoenix at your show. Yes. She wrote us uh, this jingle a long time ago, and I rewrote parts of it. Oh. And so, like, it was it was not my original thing, but there's a there's a part in it where it says, how long until Jake finds his wife? And then it says less than six, less than six months. And of course, now that's kind of awkward and funny. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, hold on. With Grandma Lori <laughs> listening and everything. But originally, like, you know, because it was like episode 10 or something where I was that like, you said that I was like, Jake, you're going to get married in six months. I'm calling this it. makes way more sense now. And I, I don't even know if I said this at the time, but in my head, I was thinking it was going to be an Asian woman. Do you know that Asian, huh? Like Asian American. Yeah, really? Because your hair or just because of Morgan Lou from back in the day? Maybe both. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably a little bit like, like I kind of the Jasmine in you, like the, the Jasmine desires. In I you. had no idea you had an, uh, I had a thought of like, I think, I think Jake's kind of got a thing for Asian girls. Uh, <laughs> and now you're dating like We've the literally never, Yeah. That. The most like Aryan blonde hair, blue blonde eyes. Hair, yeah. So we've never ever wrong. talked about Asian women before. That's so random that you just had that picked out for think, me I secretly. Because you had that one crush on that girl from Montana or whatever. She that was in enough. Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jake's just kind of the guy that's like non-traditional in his, you know, marriage. So he's going to go for the Asian girl. Mm -hmm. Well, so, my first marriage. I mean, look at that one. That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway. Rescued her from the Taliban. So that's part of the of the jingle is that part. So and and Rachel was up there for that part. I didn't know that till afterwards. <laughs> I was like, what do you think of some of those lyrics in the jingle? And she was like, I mean... I didn't. She's like, I had the paper in front of me, but I didn't sing those. And I was like, what do you mean you had the paper? She's like, I was on stage. I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, Brad. I started the jingle at the beginning by myself. And then like, you know, three or four lines in, I had just asked like a bunch of people from my family, a bunch of our friends, Top Golf Rachel, you know, anybody. Mr. Like, James came up there. Mr. Catherine, James, yeah. Isaac. Yeah. It's yeah. cool that you've coordinated all that. That's so, fun. That was fun too, to have all them kind of help in the night. So um, let's see what else. And then uh, Chick-fil-A afterwards was super cool. And everyone, uh, you teared up again at Chick-fil-A. How many times I, did you tear up yesterday? Oh, my gosh. Ten. I don't know. No, That's awesome. Probably I'm not, I'm not um, poking fun. I, I was tearing up. Oh, yeah. I definitely I teared up at the video, like the intro video beforehand. Did you really? Yeah. Huh. Because I think I think. Because because like throughout the video, people would cheer and they would laugh. And it was like you put a part in there about like Hattie and Bo. Like, yeah. And I was like look at this. Like, look, it's like, it's like a time capsule of our lives in like a really funny way, you know, video cameras are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And so, and like all these people are like, Oh, that was awesome. You know, it was like, not that we like work crazy hard on this podcast, but we do put it in time and effort into it. So to like have this reward for it was a really cool 
feeling to like see like oh all these people are really enjoying it and so that was cool uh and then i teared up when in the q a with my parents my mom like, oh, okay. was like what are you like i think well, like, the question was like what are you proud of and your son and my mom said like you're a great husband and dad or something she yeah said, like my mom my mom i asked her like the day before like hey can you come up for the jingle and I talked to her that night. She's like, well, I'm going to cry. I'm going to, I'm like, you're going to cry at the jingle. The jingle's <laughs> like this goofy kind of like fun thing. Like she's like, yeah, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry during that. Uh, so she's a huge crier. And then yeah, Chick-fil-A, I don't know, an hour into it, we're just talking to people. Uh, and then all of a sudden they kind of, Janelle says like, I need to steal you or whatever and come mm-hmm. in the middle. And the ghosties had written a song for us uh, to the theme of, or to the tune of, Old Friends by Ben Rector. Good song. And they I've talked it. about it in the podcast episode before. It's a great It's song. a great line. You can't yeah. make old friends. Yeah, it it really is. It's a Powerful. great haunting line. Like it's kind of like, it's kind of, like, <laughs> kind of cool. Cow, yeah. But it's also like, wow, that's strong. So um, but they they sang that song and then we we kind of just reflected on it afterwards. And of course I cried after like three seconds of trying to talk. So um yeah, anyway. It was yeah, I teared up a lot probably. And then again, I, I think I'm just really tired, and so I'm like like today at church, like four different times, I was like, chill, like, stop, stop, like tearing up. Like, oh, you're saying chill to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Like, gotcha. What? Like, I don't even know why you're about you're to just like... out loud to the pastor. Hey, take hey, it easy. I'm emotional. Mark of the beast. Come <laughs> on. F12 was last night. Yeah. I'm still, still coming off of it. All right. Easy. Yeah. You're heckling Hung a over. pastor. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like, like, there was like one time where it was like, I don't even know if he's saying anything right now. And I was like, about to cry and i was like what's what's going on right now and i think i'm just do you think you're very sleep deprived menopause that's a thing for men well that's what um, it's that's in what the name menopause yeah 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 um, oh i bet it's same thing you were at church you were singing hymns so it's men him it's a lot of boy things you know it's very so much just uh, oh him i oh i see yes yeah i was trying to go fast because um, it wasn't that good of a joke <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so i mean yeah just an emotional time to anytime anytime people sacrifice so much to to come see you is just a, a wonderful feeling you know uh so let me piggyback that and say this anytime anyone anywhere does something uh-huh for you yeah it's great wow i don't you ever I don't think, think about I it like that, that. <laughs> <laughs> i was i'll also give a, a strong shout out to the people that came here by themselves that that to me a good amount mind. yeah like there were there were a lot of people that were like yeah i just i just I love you guys. I love this, you know, community. And I just was very comfortable and confident that when I came here, I just connect with people. And I'm like, I don't know if I have a community that I feel that way towards. Like, like, and I think that's really cool. That's like that they did that because if I came, I, I would be, I, I would not be comfortable doing that. Like, Let me ask you this, Brad, you ever been to Austin, Texas? Yes. And it was pretty uncomfortable. Whenever Who, who'd I you go, there. who'd you go with? <laughs> who'd I go with? Mm-hmm. Myself. Good. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about that because Catherine thinks this is kind of a funny story. Um, we can go back to F12 in a second. But so I went to Austin, Texas this past week um, and my cousin lives there. And so my my parents were actually in Austin when I got there because my dad and uncle were going to the KU game uh, that weekend. Anyway, um, and so I hung out with my cousin and my parents and stuff the first couple of days before this conference. And so my dad literally drove me and like dropped me off at mm-hmm. this conference. And it was kind of like this <laughs> emotional is not the right word. Cause that makes it sound like it was like, I was crying or tearing up, but, um, I had plenty of sleep the night before. So I was not gotcha. Um, um moody, moody, uh, just like a, just like a, uh, it felt monumental in a way of like, but it was also like your dad's dropping you off at this thing. Like, yeah. And, and you know, I told my dad, I was like, I'm kind of nervous. Like, like it's a weird feeling. It's kind of like when you go to Kinnecuck, half the people have already worked there. Half yeah. the people are new. And the people that have already worked there are really excited to like reunite with their friends. And so you feel like you're the only one that hasn't worked there yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was worried. I was like, I kind of expressed that to my dad. I'm like, this is going to be kind of an uncomfortable thing and experience for me. And I just don't, you know, and so my dad's like, you know, I'm praying for you, like, good luck, you know, whatever, and all this stuff. And I like get my backpack and I'm like walking in <laughs> and literally the first thing I walk in, I'm trying to be like really cool and yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. walk in like a few people make eye contact with me. And then just turn and keep having a conversation. Like not a good start. And so I see a bathroom and I just like drop my bags and go to the bathroom. Cause I'm like, okay, regroup, regroup. You gotta, you gotta figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like that, that was not what I was expecting. I was expecting somebody to be like, 
Hey, welcome. What's your name? Let's hey, check you let's in. Let's get a name tag on you. You know, whatever, all these things. And nope, didn't happen at all. Okay. Um, got out of the bathroom, met Ian, the rest is history. <laughs> Ian was a new guy too. Ian was TJ's friend. So I was like, oh, perfect. Great. New guy. Lives, Ian. lives on Maui. So I'm like, perfect. So goes Ian's every day. But anyway, so many people came by themselves. Yes. Kyle from Denver. JT. Uh, Samuel Sin. Samuel Sin. Becca from Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the name? We talked to him last Al- night. Alvaro, Alvaro from, from DC. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. A lot of, so many people came by themselves. Yeah, dude. Janelle Miel. She might have came by herself in a Jebel, way. Yeah. 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 And that's what's cool is that like she came by herself once and now it feels like she's not coming by herself because she's got all these friends. Because like Aubrey Bragoon came by herself technically. I think right. Jill, Harris Jill Harris came Harris, by yeah, herself. All these people, yeah. But not really. Fair. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, Heather Lee. You know, like. Heather Lee. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Me. Cool. I drove there by myself. Yes. You drove there by yourself. Yes. Good for us. Yes. It was awesome. I, I think because it happened so recently, I can't still, I can't quite yet grasp the, the perspective of what just happened like this morning i woke up and i'm seeing all the notifications i'm trying to catch up on everything i'm like this feels like something i should post on facebook or instagram about this is like a fun update but it's like, i don't even know how to contextualize what just happened to me like how do i put into words what just happened so that a friend from high school can understand <laughs> what just happened you know it's like i started this podcast and we don't talk about anything but somehow some way all this is happening and we we're able to do this for this pizza guy you know like how do you even explain this <laughs> outside of a podcast well it's hard because it's 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 pretty unique. Like what else? Yeah. What else is com- comparable to this? Like, I mean, there's similar things, but like, this is, this is different, you know? Yeah, it really is. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a cool thing to, yeah. Very much I, look I'm, forward to the next event. My, my sister posted something on her story that was like, uh, the whole time we just kept asking ourselves, like, like all these people are here for Brad, you know, like, all yeah. these, it's just like crazy. Like she can't believe it, you know? Yeah. Um, my people like these guys, and others like we're asking my parents for autographs. Oh yeah, <laughs> I signed somebody's shoe. We signed uh, an arm last signed night. Signed a forearm last night. Um, oh, here's a cool story. Um, going through like the kind of the receiving line, which I have so much more respect for you after these comedy shows. Going through those, like, because I mean, like, I loved it, it but it's it, a little exhausting. Even even though I truly loved it, I, it was exhausting. So I can't imagine. Not that I think you would love it too, but some people, I understand why some people don't do that because yeah. it's like. That is, you have to tiring. be pretty outgoing to enjoy. And I am. That. And I did. That's what I'm saying. But at the end of the night, it's, it's exhausting no matter what. Yeah. Um, but I was talking to somebody. I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name. Um, I can remember your face, but she said at pickleball, there was some outsider that wasn't part of the ghosty nation there. And they were like, you know, what's going on? What is, what is this? <laughs> and she kind of explained it to him. And they're just like, Oh, they just, this just seems like such a wholesome group of people. Yeah. I think that's a cool word. Like, like, I don't know, just to, just to recognize that from very, very little interaction with, with our fans, with our, with this group of like, Oh, it's like just a wholesome group of people just hanging out and having fun. So I think it's much people who know how to have fun too. Right. Like how many different autographs do you have on your hat? 18. <laughs> so he went around yesterday and, you know, it started with the, I was the second <laughs> autograph. Oh, he, tell him about, tell him about. Yeah. yeah. He'd asked my dad for an autograph and under above my dad's signature, just said, why are you here? Steve Triplett. <laughs> and so then I signed it. And then, yeah, you just went around and just, you know, he had Aubrey Magoon sign it, it had Heather Lee sign it. Just anyone, you know, even adjacent to the podcast, right. like Isaac has signed it. So yeah. just people who know how to have fun. Just yeah, great. It was so funny watching. Yeah. Watching my dad over there signing his autograph. Like, <laughs> like what's he thinking right now? You know, what's Steve thinking? At one point, Steve just was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. That's all he said. Yeah. All day. So, um, I don't, you got anything else for it? I don't know. I think, well, the nice thing is we're going to have to record a podcast again here in two days. So maybe we'll have some more after oh, 12 really? thoughts then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. cause I leave like Wednesday through Monday. Good to know. Of this week. So, okay. yeah. Back Great. at it. Well, then let's not talk anymore then. That's probably good for us. Uh, um, we can kind of wrap it up though. Reviews yeah. of the week, perhaps. Oh, sure. I'm ready for that. Or you have anything else you want to say? No, no, no. I, I don't have much else written down. Okay. Just very thankful and tired. <laughs> and hungover. Um, <laughs> this podcast is from Dre- Drea, 1992, exclamation point. I think she just put her password as her username. Doesn't that seem like you need a number <laughs> and a... Um, <laughs> it's a capital D, Drea, 1992, exclamation. This is definitely your password. That sucks for you that you just put out there. I listen to your podcast daily on my way to work and on the way home. I adore your videos and... <clears throat> Let me start over. Uh-huh. I adore your videos on jean shorts. I literally watch them multiple times a day daily. It's like Caleb in the dog park. 
<laughs> multiple times a day daily. You have such a way uh, with your passion for comedy. I love that it's clean and you both are Christians. Keep up the great work. Your friendship is such a blessing to see. Love you, man. I love you all so much. Congrats, Brad, on baby number three and Jake on your new house. Love, Andrea Ford, Tennessee. Hmm. Last name is Tennessee? We know her password. Is Andrea Ford... Hmm. Okay. There's not like it's not like Dash from Tennessee. It's just Andrea Ford, Tennessee. Love, comma, Andrea Ford, Tennessee. I don't like the name Tennessee very much. What if it was your last name and you couldn't help it? Then I would guess I would be okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> but but if I was if I were a girl and I was in love with the guy last name Tennessee, I would think twice about it. We were talking to Nyam Nyam last night, and uh, we're like, "Your name is so great. It's so fun. If you ever get married, keep it." Or, Don't change it. Or, or she marries like uh, a guy with the last name Daniels, and it's like Janelle Benyel Daniels, <laughs> like just like like a little hyphen or something, you know? Yeah, Janelle Benyel. Yeah, kind of fun. Um, did you did you read this one? I I'm sorry, I can't remember. We haven't recorded um, in three months, so okay. it's fine. No one's gonna remember. <laughs> All right, mine's from S. Johnson, smiley face. It says hot dog. <clears throat> we get a hot dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been listening to Ghost Runners for maybe more than a year. That was awesome. That was kind of like Family Feud last night. Everyone would get into it. Let's see what the number six answer was. Yeah. So it's like, clean your room. <laughs> Everyone did such a good job. Dude, yeah. The best crowd ever. Man. Yeah, so fun. I've been listening to Ghost Runners for maybe more maybe more than a year, and I listened to every episode in maybe a month or two. It's very maybe uh, driven here. So far. <laughs> My family's been watching Trey Kennedy and listening to Correct Opinions for a while and was really excited to hear you guys had a podcast. I'm 13 years old, and I think it's really funny listening to Brad talking about Dave Ramsey. So my parents listen to his podcast, and my dad always laughs when he says, better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> the ghost runners are very relatable and really talented at making people laugh and feel like you actually know, even though they are really two guys who live almost 2,000 miles from me. Wow. She lives in Washington. You guys really have an amazing sense of humor and are so lighthearted and kind. It's seriously so incredible to know how many people listen to you guys and how you've brought all these people together. I'm really sorry, but I'm go not going to F12. I'm only 13 and I'm too young to get a job. So I definitely can't afford buying a plane ticket to go to Kansas. Invest in crypto. Also, <laughs> I got a ghost runner sweatshirt for Christmas and my brother got a shirt and a sweatshirt and we love them. Random thing. I think you guys and my cousin would get along well. Oh. He loves pickleball as a manager at Chick-fil-A and played college football. Yeah. I recommend this podcast to anyone. You won't regret it. Thank you guys for everything you do and keep up the good work. Thank you. S. Johnson from Smiley Face, Tennessee. Um, a lot of to see today. also it's, it's so fun seeing uh whenever we have these events seeing our merch in person isn't it awesome yeah yeah i really my favorite is the uh ghost runners cup the chick-fil-a cup that says ghost runners on an embroidery hoodie that's your favorite huh it's my favorite that i think i see. I'm, but I'm, I'm like i'm like so i feel so uh cocky because every time i see like you're like dang that's a sweet I'm design like, i like the way that shirt looks <laughs> even though it's like very simple it just says ghost it's like that's that looks cool yeah so, my favorite piece of merch is probably the one that says, I like Jake, uh, when Rachel wears it. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that was, was kind of fun. She came up on stage last night. I was like, yeah, Topgolf Rachel's here. And then before we kind of announced it, and then she like opened up her jacket and said, oh, I like yeah. Jake. And I was like, that's kind of fun. Yeah. It's glad she was wearing a shirt. So yeah. Um, thank you for the reviews. We have got a lot this week, so should have no trouble having two more ready to go by Tuesday. Um, Brad, would you like to end this episode with the jingle that you sang last night? Yes, please. Okay. Shout out Kelsey Settle for co-writing this one. On YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The end. The end. <laughs> deuce, deuce, deuce. <laughs> a lot of good deuce chants yesterday. Pickleball yeah. and at the show. Yeah, it man. was fun. <laughs> hey, great jingle, dude. Great Thanks, work, dude. even with the, the scratchy throat. The There's a lot of just singing and talking all day long yesterday. So yeah, yeah. A lot, lot to handle. Um, before I forget, I forgot if I said her name earlier when I was showing the thing of the Ghost Hunters talk show, but shout out to Jennifer... Vorpal? Vorpal? I always say Vor Vorpal in my head. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I say that too because there's an H in there. Anyway. We got uh, some awesome gifts, but she gave us a million gifts and we didn't get to talk to her. I know, it. and I was already I looking forward to- I genuinely feel very bad. Like, yeah, So Jennifer, fan of the week. Uh, yeah. I was looking forward to seeing her because she was in the guillotine league, her and her husband. Like, yeah. made it pretty far. I think yeah. we did some trades together, you know? It's nice <laughs> to put a face to the trade. Right. And um, anyway, she gave, us, she gave me all these uh, coasters for my house that are all like different quotes from Heck the yeah. podcast and from Instagram and then- Gave Brad some stuff too. Gave us cheese curds. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. They're from Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, the curds and the people. Mm -hmm. And so shout out to them. I wanted to say that. This is a bummer we didn't get to meet you. <sighs>
It's been a great, great few days, man. Hey. Hey. Let's go watch the Super Bowl with these teams that no one cares about. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just don't want to bash on the Bengals. They're great. Yeah. Did you see that comment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. Ba- I didn't bash him that much. Yeah, Whatever. I know. I wanted to reply to that comment. I was like, I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. Who day? We'll say it. Who day? Thank you, everyone, for coming to F12, for making this so fun for Brad and I, uh, making it so fun for our parents. I think they had just as good a time as we did. I think so. Mark uh, your calendars for summer. Make it, Mark calendars for the summer. Uh-huh. Make sure you have that date uh, blocked off because yep. we're going to have a pickleball tournament that day. Yep. That's It's going to be zoppity. going to be zoppity. See okay. you guys then. Love you guys. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.